welcome back. National Security Minister Herman Gil Francis will be the guest on the hot seat tonight, fielding questions from host Crystal Revere. He is speaking candidly about the tenure of Commissioner of Police Severin Moshari and why he felt that having Milton Daisy return to the force was necessary. He also speaks on what the future holds for both Commissioner Moshari and Daisy, given widespread speculation that Moshari will be ousted well ahead of his scheduled retirement. Is Police Commissioner Severin Moshari being pushed out of the police force? Rumors about the National Security Minister being underwhelmed by Commissioner Moshery's performance have persisted. But is he exacting his will in the police force by bringing back so-called golden boy Milton Daisy in a bid to oust Commissioner Moshery? The minister is in the hot seat tonight with host Crystal Revere. Some people believe that you are unimpressed with Commissioner Moshery and it appears that he is being pushed to retirement and um, even the person who was acting in his stead has been re-engaged as a consultant even after retirement. Is there any truth to this? Yeah, there is some truth to that. Um, and at the end of the day, the Prime Minister will make the announcement because although I'm the, the Minister of National Security, the Prime Minister is the Minister of Internal Security. So there, there, there are things that he's privy to as the, as the Prime Minister that I am not privy to, as the, the Minister of Home Affairs, he would inform me. The Minister sought to clear the air on the relationship between himself and Commissioner Moshery. He highlighted his role in Moshery's career progression. There have been many questions surrounding what preceded Moshery's leave and Daisy's return to the police force. Minister Francis says the choice to proceed on leave was that of Commissioner Moshery. But once Daisy returned, it is clear that the minister was very impressed with his performance and points out the differences. Mr. Moshery and myself are very, very good friends. And I'm sure that you've heard Mr. Moshery say before that he would not have been commissioner if it was not for, for me. Because I took him as a young officer, gave him his first, first set of promotion, and guided him along. So I was the officer in charge of prosecution. He took over from me. Okay, so there is no, there is no bad blood between Mr. Moshery and myself. But sometimes you, 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 you come to a point that um, you have to look at the bigger, the, 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 the bigger f the future, so the bigger picture. Mr. Moshery, as all police officers have, leave. Um, so he was entitled for his leave. He ac applied for it, and he took some of his leave. During that time, Mr. Daisy acted. And we saw, some, we saw a little difference in, in the crime situation. In the esprit de corps, in the police force, the way the police officers reacted, the way they behaved. You saw that. We were not, the government was not the only ones who saw it. There were citizens out there very influential people who talked about it, okay? That maybe Mr. Daisy was more approachable, Mr. Daisy was more in the, the public. I remember, I'm sure you remember the, the incident with the bikers. There was Mr. Mo, Mr. Daisy on a van addressing the bikers and was even ready to take a bike to show them how they should, should ride a bike properly, okay? So he was up front. He reminded me of, of Vernon Faswa who was always in the public, who was always sharing information, who was accessible and, and, and those other things. Minister Francis says decisions had to be made about succession within the police force. He confirms that Prime Minister Alan Shasti has had discussions on the matter with the commissioner in preparation for his departure. So is there a successor in mind? Indeed. Find out who it is on tonight's edition of The Hot Seat. The National Youth Council and the National Students Council have clapped back following criticism that they are being partisan in their approach to national issues. The comments were made on a UWP-affiliated talk show by retired politician Peter Josie, who argued that the youth leaders are being groomed by the opposition St. Lucia Labour Party. The president of the National Youth Council has called for a public apology. Following comments by a well-known personality that the St. Lucia National Students' Council has partisan interests, the council has denounced all claims. In the radio interview, a member of the NSC is accused of being groomed by the opposition party. 
President of the National Students' Council, Shuin Alexander, explained on Wednesday that the council is only interested in representing the needs of students in St. Lucia. As an organization, we are a NGO, a non-governmental organization. We don't have any partisan preference, and I would like to reiterate, we don't have any partisan preference. We solely operate in the best interest of students, as this is the main purpose of the St. Lucia National Student Council. As a result of the comments made, it has been reported that members of the NSC are being bullied on various social media platforms. The president of the St. Lucia National Youth Council, which is the umbrella body of the NSC, Nayos Alfred, has called for an apology to be issued to the National Students Council. I have to say personally that I'm very disappointed because of course Mr. Josie would have gone up through the trade union movement, he would have known about how it is to represent the people who elected him and to indicate that members of the student councils are being groomed by political operatives was totally out of hand. Um, I cannot understand why somebody in that position would find it fitting to pick on students in, from five students who are just doing their job and speaking on behalf of students of St. Lucia. That was completely inappropriate and I definitely call on Mr. Josie to issue a public apology to the National Student Council because everything that they've done, they've been completely transparent. They've met with the relevant officials that they need to. And at this point in time, we are supposed to be supporting the students. He said, while he understands that St. Lucia is currently in the silly season, that is no excuse for the individuals who are standing up for their rights to be attacked. Alfred said, the NYC stands in solidarity with the NSC as they continue to rally for students across the board. What is even worse is the fact that this member of the student council who was being targeted was actually not the one who was involved in the press conference on January 11th. He was not the one who was involved in the press conference at all. So um, from a point of information, um, that definitely has to be addressed. But I want to reiterate the support of the National Youth Council towards the efforts of the National Students Council, of course. They are an umbrella body of the, um, of the NYC, and we stand fully behind them as they look to represent the students of St. Lucia. The two bodies have called for a retraction of the statement, as well as a public apology to the National Students Council. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Geneve Gonzalez. In months past, disgruntled employees have been using the media as an outlet to shed light on what they say is unfair treatment at the hands of their employers who they claim forced them to come into work whilst awaiting COVID-19 PCR test results or threaten to replace them when they refuse to execute tasks that they feel expose them to the virus. Although the employees have been too scared to speak publicly and appear on the media, they have asked that the matter be brought to the powers that be to put a stop to the injustices. And so it was presented to the island's chief medical officer, Dr. Sharon Belmar george who said this should not be the case under any circumstance. Persons who are in quarantine, persons who are in isolation are provided with a sick leave during that period where they stay at home. The public is once again advised that if you are unwell, if you have been tested, if you are in home quarantine for whatever reason, you are to stay in during the period of that, of that time. This is a public, we are dealing with a public health um, issue. When you go out, you put in your co-workers, you put in whoever you go on the bus with, you put in a number of persons um, at risk, which would have a greater um, effect on, on, on the workflow if more persons become exposed. Dr. Belmar George says the ministry has been working closely with a number of employers and the Chamber of Commerce to mitigate the risks faced by employees. She went on to send a message to employers. Persons who are tested, persons who are in quarantine, persons who are in isolation are provided with a sick leave during that period where they stay at home. The public is once again advised that if you are unwell, if you have been tested, if you are in home quarantine for whatever reason, you are to stay in during the period of that, of that time. This is a public, we are dealing with a public health um, issue. When you go out, you put in your co-workers, you put in whoever you go on the bus with, you put in a number of persons 
um, at risk, which would have a greater um, effect on, on, on the workflow if more persons become exposed. It is extremely important. The health and safety of the workers has to be the priority. And if we are to contain and reduce spread within the workplace, it is extremely important that persons with signs and symptoms stay at home or get medical care. The chief medical officer said the documents given to employees awaiting their results are legally binding and so the set protocol must be followed. The island CMO is also seeking to clear the air on a term that is now being heard more frequently than one would like to hear, COVID-related death. Dr. Sharon Belmar george says it is important for the masses to understand the term in order to reduce the fear and stigma surrounding the COVID-19 virus. She gave the details during a Wednesday morning press conference. Ever since the Ministry of Health announced that the island had recorded its first COVID-related death on the 10th of November 2020, the level of anxiety amongst the masses has risen with each death following the first. On Wednesday, the Department of Health hosted a press conference to update the nation on the current situation where the virus is concerned. And during this press conference, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar george sought to quell the anxiety and confusion that surrounds the term. This is one of the issues I want to, to clear up. We term COVID-related deaths because we test persons who die for COVID-19. Our patients who've passed away, our people who've had, and I want to make it very clear, one death is too many. Our plan from very early was to contain the cases, reduce spread, because we are aware that we have a vulnerable population for COVID-19, and part of our plan is the strengthening of our patients with chronic diseases and our elderly to protect them, to reduce and to prevent them from getting sick because one death from COVID-19 is too many for us. The CMO explained that when the term is used, it is not a final diagnosis. I want to make that very clear. I am at no point saying COVID killed somebody and I am not saying that nobody died of COVID. Our patients have other underlying conditions. Our patients that we have had to date a range of other underlying conditions which could have also caused their death. Now, it is a known fact that COVID-19 exacerbates an already existing health condition. It makes it worse. So I am not in a position to say COVID killed any one of them or to say it is not COVID. What, I, what we are saying, this person passed away and was positive with COVID-19. Dr. Belmar George said none of the deceased patients were diagnosed solely with the COVID pneumonia when they passed away. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. She has also urged the public not to be alarmed by the British variant of COVID-19. According to the CMO, multiple variants of the COVID-19 virus have surfaced since the outbreak in December 2019, and vaccines remain effective for all of them. Since the onset of COVID-19, up to six variants of SARS-CoV-2 have emerged. These include the South Africa variant, the Nigeria variant, and the British variant, which was believed to be in circulation since September of 2020. St. Lucia received confirmation of the British variant B117 being on island back in December of 2020. Since then, the public has raised concerns over the variants being on island, calling for the country to close its borders to UK travellers. At a press conference on Wednesday, the chief medical officer sought to allay the fears of the public and said that variants of COVID-19 are like any other mutation of any virus that has been recorded throughout time. Just as we see influenza mutates every year, every year we need a new influenza vaccine. It's a similar case that's happening with COVID-19, where it mutates, it changes, and some of the characteristics of the virus um, also changed. So in December, we were alerted, the world was alerted on this new variant. What they noted on the variant, and let me also indicate that, they also made it clear that this variant was circulating from September. So it was a lot of months when this variant was already, um, it already existed. So what the analysis indicated this most likely is already everywhere. We were alerted in December, but it was already everywhere since September, so that's like four months that it was, oh, the countries were open. So 
Um, the likelihood, the risk of it being in other countries was very high. The chief medical officer noted that while the British variant B117 is 70% more transmissible, it has not been seen to be more severe. If it is easier to be transmitted, it means for every one case, we expect to see more persons um, developing the, the illness. The, in what the research is showing to date is that the form of the disease is not more severe. That is, it is affecting people the same way. So the death rate is not more. The signs and symptoms are not more severe. It is not killing people more. People are not suffering more with it. The only change that they have noted at this point in the research is that, that it is transmitted faster. Dr. Sharon Belmar George maintains that research so far shows that COVID-19 vaccines currently on the market are effective for this new variant of COVID-19. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. You're watching the Hot 7 TV nightly news still to come. The National Youth Council appeals to men and denounces gender-based violence against women. Senator Lisa Jawair on the need to do more to protect women and Barbados goes into lockdown.